Hello YouTube from my home in the desert southwest. Surprise. <laughs> uh, anyway, what we have here today is a 2016 Mazda 6 Grand Touring and customer complaint is that the um, front end shimmies under braking, um, especially um, coming from higher speeds, you can feel the steering wheel shaking and the front end um, shimmying only during braking. Um, these are the original brake rotors on this car. So the customer elected to do an upgrade to some power stop um, drilled and slotted rotors, as well as the power stop evolution sport carbon fiber ceramic pads, uh, the Z23 uh, low dust pads. But anyway, uh, to get this job started for the front brakes, we will loosen the lug nuts, not take them off, just break them free uh, on the wheel before even attempting to jack the vehicle up. Um, the reason why we break these uh, lug nuts loose is if they are excessively tight, we don't run the risk of having the vehicle fall off the jack and the jack stands. Next step is to jack the vehicle up and have a good jack stand underneath on a secure location uh, so that um, we're safe here. We don't want the vehicle dropping on us. Um, consult your service manual um, for the correct locations to um, jack the vehicle up and support it. Um, once that's done, we'll pull the wheel off and that exposes the brake caliper. We have two 14 millimeter head bolts here holding the caliper onto its bracket. And then we've got behind here um, two 17 millimeter head bolts that hold the bracket to the rest of the steering knuckle. So we'll go ahead and get the, the brake caliper um, off and out of the way. Um, I will note that sometimes um, this inner nut here will spin, so you can get a 17 millimeter, a thin 17 millimeter, and hold that there while you break the torque on these uh, brake caliper bolts. Okay, once those bolts are free, we can go ahead and try to pull the brake caliper off of the rotor here. And generally on these Mazdas, they'll slip right off. All right, uh, we're gonna be careful here that we don't kink the hose or drop the, drop the caliper here. We'll just go ahead and put it aside nearby where it's, um, you know, not gonna fall over and, and break this brake hose. So we'll go ahead and loosen the brake caliper bracket from the steering knuckle and that's with the 17 millimeter um, socket here. So this is the brake caliper um, mounting bracket with the um, brake pads in, in place here. So we'll set this aside for the time being. Next is to get the brake rotor off. Um, for those of us who live in the Rust Belt or up north where um, road salt is used, um, you might have difficulties getting this rotor off. You'll certainly want to spray um, some sort of uh, penetrant like air coil, um, on the hub here to help get some of that um, penetrant oil up in there between the wheel bearing and the rotor. But uh, we're here in the desert southwest and I'm told things don't fuse together here. So I'm just gonna grab a nice dead blow mallet here and just hit it and see if, it's, see if this rotor comes off. Not too bad. I'm from Alaska, so these things usually fight you off, but uh, we got the brake caliper, sorry, the brake 
rotor free from the wheel hub. All right. So now with that free, um, we can go ahead and start cleaning um, all of our parts here. Pay particular attention to the surface here on which the rotor lies. We want to make sure we get all the corrosion off of this surface um, and prepare it for the new for the new rotor here. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that with some brake clean and a stiff wire brush and we'll see you here in the next camera segment. All right so now we've got the um, brake hub surface or the wheel hub surface here on the wheel bearing or unit bearing um, cleaned off with a wire brush. We got all the loose scaly rust off and just got the surface as clean and flat as we can get it. Um, so that's good to go. Optionally for those of us in the you know rust belt you can go ahead and spray um, something like fluid film onto the surface or um, some people like in the Midwest uh, like to use anti-seize on the surface. Um, you don't have to glob a whole bunch on the surface here. Um, you just want to get around the hub here and just on these flat surfaces here where the brake rotor sits, okay? Um, a little goes a long way, so if you do that with the anti-seize, just a little layer, okay? So next order of business is we want to clean the, the brake caliper as well. Um, we want to pay attention to this surface that the um, inner brake pad sits on here on the piston piston face. Um, you just want to just try to clean up any scaly rust that might be on here. Um, in this case, this one's relatively clean. And probably can't get you a good camera angle on it because the hose is too short. It won't let me rotate it. But you also want to clean this inside face of the brake caliper as well. Get that cleaned up with a brake cleaner. And then we can go ahead and push the piston here in. Um, in fact, we'll go ahead and do that now before I start cleaning. Um, you could use a C-clamp or a tool. Here, let me, let me back up some. You could use a tool like this brake caliper um, piston tool. Um, pretty simple. Just stick it in here. And, oops, sorry, stick it in there run this with your hand um, and just do this until the piston is compressed all the way into the caliper. Okay, once that's done, go ahead and release. Um, I will note while we're here, um, oftentimes air gets trapped in the dust boot here for the piston. You do not want it to stand um, proud of the piston face here. So what you'll do is we'll just, um, you can get a little pick, okay? Try not to get use a sharp one, but you wanna put it in between the dust seal and the piston and just to allow the excess air in here to escape. Okay, we don't want to puncture this dust seal. We're just trying to get underneath it so that we can get the air out. Okay, something like that. Okay, got it in there so air can come out. And you see that? Hopefully that you caught that on camera. As I rubbed around there with my finger with the pick tool in between the piston and the dust seal, that got the air bled out. That's a very important step. You'll ruin this dust boot here if you just slap the pad on, okay? All right, so I'm gonna proceed with cleaning this surface up as well as this inner surface, and we'll get the camera rolling again once I'm done with that. Okay, hopefully you can see here, I've got this brake caliper as clean as I can reasonably get it. Um, just got some brake clean on the surface here, as well as this um, piston. So we'll go ahead and set this aside for the time being. Again, being careful to not drop the caliper while it's suspended by this hose. You do, um, if you want to use like a, a coat hanger or something to hang this up, that's fine. I've just grabbed an extra um, jack stand here to do this. And I'm the only one working in this area, so we don't have any fear that this caliper is going to fall off. Okay, it's pretty 
pretty stable where it is. Next order of business is this guy here. Okay, the brake caliper bracket. Um, so we wanna just take note of how everything is oriented here. Again, this is the factory Mazda brake pads here. Nothing special, but again, we just wanna keep note of everything. We've, we've got these abutment clips here on the caliper bracket, as well as these anti-rattle clips here that we will need to take note of. So with it oriented in the vehicle here on this past, uh, driver's side, the clips are on the bottom, those anti-rattle clips. So we just keep track of that when we take the brake pads off of this unit. Pretty much just fall off, okay? They come off a lot easier than they go on. And then again, we'll take notice of how these clips are oriented. Um, see how the, these springs here are oriented this way. They are side specific. So keep track of how these are oriented. Okay. So I'll go ahead and remove these clips um, like so. Now that I've taken note with the camera, which way they were oriented. Same with this side. The brake pads come with the new abutment clips. So we'll go ahead and get some brake cleaner here. Um, spray the surfaces off here, these surfaces off here, and with a wire brush, clean it off. So we'll see you here in the next clip. Something else I want to note, so we've got these surfaces uh, brushed off and cleaned off. Um, these caliper slide pins are often neglected. Um, as you can see here, urgh, these ones aren't really going in and out so well. So we've got to pull these out and clean them and reapply brake grease on these. Yeah, that shouldn't be, you should be able to slide these relatively easily. Um, they are different from uh, top to bottom. They, one of them has the buffer, rubber buffer here and the other does not. So keep track of which one went in the which hole, but definitely, okay, we got this one free. Uh, we definitely want to take these out, clean them up, and re-grease them before putting them back in, okay? And we wanna make sure that um, they slide in and out pretty easily by hand here. Um, if you don't do that, you'll have uneven wear on your inner and outer brake pads. So very important step, something I thought I should mention. Um, looks like this one were kind of stuck initially, but now that I've broken them free, they're okay. So I'll go ahead and pull these off, wipe them clean, and re-grease them with brake caliper grease. This is an example here. Got one of the pins cleaned off, as you can see. And Power Stop does supply a little bit of this brake caliper grease. Um, just a little bit is all it takes. We just want to smooth this over. Just like so, nice even coat, not too thick. And then we'll offer it back up into the boot here. All right. Snap the boot into the slide bolt here and just make sure it goes in and out by hand pretty easily there. Um, it should not be stuck, it should not, it should be smooth in its movement, okay? So that's pretty smooth. And I'll just do the same for this other side. So the next step is to put the new abutment clips on the brake caliper bracket. Um, for those of us in the Rust Belt or Alaska, like where I'm from, um, it's always a good idea to coat these surfaces here with a little bit of brake, brake lubricant, just like this packet here. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot. You just wanna put a little layer of something here, just to, it helps prevent um, rust jacking and corrosion from building up here underneath the abutment clip, okay? You just want to put a little layer. It doesn't take a whole lot. I'm sorry if I've come off camera here. I did not take my cameraman with me when I moved. All right, so we got that um, lubricated. You probably could see a little bit. Um, 
brand new abutment clip. Um, remember I told you to pay attention to which way these were oriented in before removing the original ones out. So we just want to make sure the new ones go in the same way. So here's the other one. just go on something like that. So I'll go ahead and do the other side here off camera and we'll get back to you. All right, so now we've got the brand new brake pad and we've got the supplied anti-rattle clips here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the anti-rattle clip onto the brake pad the same way that the originals were. So this is uh, the upboard pad. So we'll go ahead and snap this guy on here, okay? snaps on like so. We'll set that aside. And this is going to be the new inboard pad. As you can see here in the bottom of the pan here, I've got the originals just to keep me straight. Sanity check, you know. And we'll put them on just like so. So from here, we can grab the brake caliper bracket. All right, and put the brake pads on. So that's inside, that one's oriented for the outside. So we'll just go ahead and slip them in here. So what I did here is I pushed this side in, as you can see this anti-rattle clip is taking the gap in between the pad and the abutment clip. So we got it started there, and now I'm gonna push this side in. As you can see here, um, this pad moves fairly freely. Okay, we want to make sure they slide freely. Uh, these anti-rattle clips here keep the pads from falling off completely. But you just want to make sure that if you just, with a little bit of pressure by hand, these pads move. See that? That's a good sign. Um, if your pads get stuck, there is some problem here. And, you know, back home, Rust is usually the issue, okay? So we'll go ahead and repeat the process. Inboard pad. Get things started. Push the anti-rattle clip side in. And now we can push the bottom in, or top. In this case, it's the top that we just pushed in, the side that doesn't have the anti-rattle clip. As you can see here, we're done. Um, the pad moves freely, so we know that we're not going to have any issues with the brakes binding here. So we got some surfaces cleaned up. Um, I forgot to mention where the um, brake caliper bracket sits on the steering knuckle here. You want to make sure this is clear of any scaly rust, and you just want to make sure that's clean. We have the cleaned... I cleaned this off camera. We've got this uh, brake rotor ready to sit on here again. So we'll just line it up with the lug holes. Again, things are easier when the camera is not in the way. All right, so we'll go ahead and set the rotor on here. Um, let me go find a lug nut. Back in my other shop in Alaska, I usually have a, a big nut here that you could um, use a lug nut here to screw down onto the rotor. So I'm just going to use a wrench or something just for the time being, just to help with installation. Just use that to um, get the rotor centered onto the hub here. Okay. Looks hokey, but if you use a nut by itself, it'll bottom out before this surface here could. Um, before the surface here can line up with the wheel hub. Okay, so now the brake rotor is more or less on the way it should be. And now we can offer up the brake caliper bracket. Okay. Like so. Let's see if I can move you guys. Do it in a way that you're not going to be completely in my way. Okay. So we just 
want to line these holes up here with the steering knuckle. We'll grab the brake bolt here and just get it started like so. I'll we'll grab this other one here, get it started like so, and we will wind these down and tighten it to the torque spec. Uh, you want to consult your service manual for the torque spec, but um, in the case of this particular vehicle, the torque spec for these two bolts is 68 to 81 foot-pounds. So I'll go ahead and tighten these off, off camera here, and we'll get back to you here in, in a second. Okay, so, okay, there's 81 foot-pounds there. there so now we can push the brake pads in against the rotor surface um, again this is one reason why this um, lug nut with an extra bolt here, or an extra nut or something to take up the space between the lug nut and the rotor is handy so now everything's parallel right here okay next we get this brake caliper hand ready here okay um, we will need some brake caliper grease onto this surface here on the brake caliper piston as well as the back side on these two ears here. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. We ran out of the power stop supply grease so I just have this extra grease that I always keep in my toolbox. So it just doesn't take a whole lot here but you just want to get these surfaces that the brake pads come into contact with. And the reason you do this here is, believe it or not, so this grease actually helps with uh, brake squeal and brake pad noise. It helps attenuate those vibrations. Okay. It doesn't take a lot, a lot, just a little layer. And then the same with the piston side. Okay. Pretty simple here, um, yeah. And that's it, okay? And it's okay if a little bit gets on this rubber dust boot that, that brake caliper grease is actually more of a silicone, so it's not gonna eat away at the rubber. So with the piston pushed in all the way, now we can get the caliper to slide on top of the brake pads. Now this caliper slide pin will push that in to get these brake caliper ears on. Now we'll take those two 14 millimeter head bolts, line everything up, and we'll tighten these down to 23 to 28 foot pounds. That's the factory specified torque for this particular car. Again, consult your factory service manual if you are unsure. It's so hard to work in this heat, it is. It is in the evening now, and it's still 98 degrees with the garage door open. I don't have air conditioning in the garage yet. So that's 28 foot-pounds. All right, so last order of business, at least for the labor part, is we'll straighten this uh, wheel, the straighten the steering wheel out so that uh, we could put the tires back on and we'll be sure to remove this wrench and the lug nut here so that we can get the rim on. Okay, we've got the lug nut snug down, um, not very tight, just enough that it's the wheel is sitting up against the brake rotor and hub, um, nice and square. Let the weight of the vehicle back down. We have chocks on the back wheels and now we're gonna tighten the lug nuts to factory spec. So on this car, the spec is rather wide. It's 80 foot-pounds to 108 foot-pounds. So I just went ahead and set the torque wrench to 108. You want to tighten in a star pattern evenly.
a 21 millimeter socket for the lug nut. Okay, so that concludes the wheel tightening. Okay, so for the inter interest of time and to not um, violate any um, traffic laws in this area, I'm not gonna have a camera in the video in the car while I am doing the brake bedding in procedure. Um, always follow the recommendations of the brake pad manufacturer um, for bedding in the brakes. Um, I will also say, like I've said in some of my other brake videos, before you even pull the car out of gear, pump the brake pedal until you get a good firm pedal. This gets the caliper's piston to adjust to the new brake pads and the rotor. Um, if you don't do that, your brake pedal will go to the floor and you might have an accident like a service manager of mine did many years ago. So pump up that brake pedal before you go anywhere with the vehicle, please. Now, um, power stop was nice to include this break-in procedure here. So I'll go ahead and hold it in front of the camera and let you read it. Um, hopefully you can just pause the video and read it. So this is what I'm gonna go do next here shortly. Um, after I go check the brake fluid and such. Um, you might want to top the brake fluid off as necessary. Anyway, I hope this video helps. I um, hope you found it um, interesting and informative on how to do a front brake job on your 2016 Mazda 6. If you like this video, please click the like button, um, the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, um, go ahead and subscribe please um, and if you would like to be notified for future videos uh, go ahead and click on that bell icon and select your preferences for notifications until next time have a good day or night wherever you are thanks